In this tutorial, we will be covering um, the miscellaneous tools we have on SOLIDWORKS, namely this section of the feature tab. So first, the tool we have is called the fillet tab. Okay, so whenever you have a rough edge in one of your designs, what you can do is round them up or, you know, uh, make those um, uh, offer something a constant variable or uh, smooth them up or depending on how you want so if you click on the fillet tool on the left property manager you will see a number of options here okay and the first option is the fillet type where you can select a constant fillet to be applied throughout or maybe a variable size where in one corner, let's say you're adding a 10 millimeter of smoothing, where in another one, uh, 5 millimeter smoothing. Here, uh, the third one is you select two faces and then based on that, apply the fillet. And on the last one is a full rounded fillet where you have led to select three different faces. Most common one is the constant fillet size, okay, where what you can do is either select the surface, it will apply the fillet of the size that you have selected here uh, throughout or you can select one edge at a time uh, where you want to apply the fillet okay something something like this okay now here if you go look into look here you also have two different options one is a symmetric as you can see you are applying the fillet in a symmetric manner on both the sides or you can have an asymmetric where in one side, let's say, as you can see, the arrow shows that here you have 10 and here you also have 10. So let's say you decided, uh, so you want to make it 5. So what you're going to do is select here and double click on it and change the number. And you will see it applied 5 millimeter in one corner and 10 millimeters in the other corner. So this is asymmetric. Okay. Um, and once you're done, click OK and it will apply the fillet there okay uh, let's go into the fillet tool again you can also have a variable size fillet okay where you want to apply a fillet of different size in different corners so let's say i'm selecting this edge okay and after selecting this edge i'm saying that okay i want to divide it into say five different portions you can select how many portions you want from here right and right now, everything is being set as five millimeters, as you can see. Okay, this corner is five, this corner is five, so I'm just making it symmetric. But let's say you, you have want to change one of these points. So you see these blue points, if you select them, this point assignment will pop up. Okay, so you can change this radius so let's say once you have selected one of the bubbles let's say i'm selecting this one and here we have an unassigned here on the unassigned i'm just changing this number to let's say 10 millimeters as you see the fillet here has changed let's say i'm gonna assume this one here also as 10 millimeters and in between here i'm just gonna make it as five millimeters again so as you see, it has applied a variable fillet throughout. And you can also make it asymmetric <coughs> to have two different radiuses on two different portions of it. Once you're done, just click OK and it will create the fillet for you. Okay, cool. Uh, next, again, we select the fillet option. And we have here is the face fillet. Okay, so basically you're selecting two different faces. So let's say I'm assuming I'm selecting this face, then on the other box on the left side property manager, I'll be selecting the other faces on which I wanna apply the fillet. So as the coincidence of these two surfaces, we have them here, the fillet will be applied on these corners. Okay, so once you're done, once you're done, just click OK and you will have your fillet there. Okay. So now let me delete all the all the previous fillet I've created. 
and let's go into the fillet option again okay now last but not the least we have the full round fillet so here we'll be selecting two three different surfaces here we're not giving the option where what's the size of the fillet here like on the first one you see the size here on the second one you see the size of the fillet here the third one you see the size of the fillet here here we don't do that it will be calculated automatically based on the surfaces you are selecting okay so solidworks will do the calculation for you here so if you simply select three different surfaces okay uh, the order by the way the order is has to be in order uh oh my bad uh this works much better uh, you need to use this for uh, rectangle objects i completely forgot so let me create a new plane here for this example let's say it's gonna be somewhere along here i'm creating a box for example and let's create this okay let's go to the fillet surface because that was variable that's why it was messing it up um you select the three surfaces one two and three and as you can see it has already completed on the other one it didn't work because um, when i'm selecting this and this the surface has the edges along this line this line and this line and it was not covering the whole thing so creating a fillet would have been a problematic thing so once you're done click ok and now you have a fillet object okay nice awesome okay uh, let's go to the next tool um, which is called the chamfer tool okay so what does the chamfer tool do so if you click on the upside down triangle here you will see the chamfer tool chamfer is basically chamfering one edge or one corner uh, of any object you have there okay so i'm just basically cutting it off on from one of the sides chamfering it off so in the chamfering option we have five different types the first one you know the from one of the corners what's what's going to be the distance and the angle basically let's say if you want to create a chamfer on this edge you know uh, what will be the next point from this edge let's say uh, 10 millimeters so 10 millimeters to right will be here left will be here and then you will create an angle uh, let's say 10 degrees 5 degrees and whatever the portion you have there you will just cut it off so this is the first type the second one is you already know the distance which portion you want to cut out so you start from this one uh what first distance will be on the left side you know how much you want to cut from this portion the second one you know on the downside how much you want to cut on this portion and then you just apply it and it will just cut away from those distances okay and the other one is you just know where you want to create the chamfer which is this and you uh you know the distance or the length of that chamfer that's it so you just need to select two of the surfaces where you need to create chamfer so let's start with the first time okay oh by the way i uh, missed the third one which is a vertex based so you need to just select uh, in which vertex on which corner you want to create that okay so let's start with the first one uh, where you have you know the distance and the angle so i'm just selecting the edge where you want to apply okay and on the left property manager you will see what, what distance as you can see it is applying this is where the distance will be so you can change it from here or the property manager is show, showing it in summary here so let's say you want to go for 15 millimeters right now it's 45 degrees you say that hey let's go with something called 25 degrees so it calculated that 25 degree from on this angle uh, on this angle and uh, will be chamfering this portion once you're done click ok and you will see this is how it has chamfered uh, the that material okay so let's again go to the chamfer tool and let's select this one where you have both the distances we know both the distances right so i'll be applying it on the other corner which is this one so i'm selecting the edge here and i'm saying okay um, cut away let's say five millimeters from each side 
So it's going to do so. And similar to fillet tool, you also have the symmetric and asymmetric option. If you select the asymmetric option, so you can select, hey, uh, this corner, it says it's five millimeter, let's say you want to make it 15. And on the other side, it says 10 millimeters, so let's say you want to make it 12. So you can adjust that, click K, hey, and you will have the chamfer based on distance from the edge that we're looking into. Okay, let's go into another corner. Um, again, upside down triangle, click chamfer, and we're going to select the vertex option. So in this one, we're not selecting any edge, but we're going to select a vertex. So it will be applying a chamfer in one of the corners. And as you see, the three corners, what will be the distance of the three corners from this original selected vertex will pop up. You can select, let's say, 15 millimeters from one of the corners, five from the second, and third will be, let's say, 20. Once you're done, click OK, and there you have it, a corner chamfer. Last option here is the chamfer option, again, uh, where we have the distance of this. So what you need to do is select the two surfaces where you want to apply the chamfer. It's, uh, oops, my bad. Uh, you need to select the boxes first. OK. So as you see, it is showing you by two colors. Blue is this, and pink is this one, and how much distance you want to have. And you can also select the distance where it's done asymmetric or symmetric, whatever you want. So let's say I'm just keeping it symmetric and making it 20, and click OK, then there you have it, your chamfer tool. Has done a lot of chamfering on this object itself. Cool enough, OK. Next tool we're going to look into is going to be the mirror tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this we have here. I'm going to select all it and right click on it and delete. And I'm going to select this one, delete absorb features. It will also remove the sketch. So we're not going to need the sketch. OK, so now we have this plane and the object itself. On the sketch, if you remember, we had an axis that we were using as the mirror. And the other sketches were used for and selected to be mirrored, right? In this case, what we can do is go ahead, select the mirror. Now, as it's a 3D object, the mirror will be in a 2D plane. So this is going to be this plane that we have created here will be the mirror plane. So if you select that, then we have here is the features to mirror, uh, mirror or faces to mirror. So you can select based on this, but as we want to copy the whole body itself, so we're going to select this option. So it's depending, you can select a feature from this tree menu, or you can select a face and copy it on, on the here, or you can select the whole body itself. Our, our case is a body, so we're going to select this box, select here. As you can see, it is already showing you uh, the object. Now, one thing to remember, these objects are not touching one another. So there is no way we can merge these two solids. So you need to turn this box off where it says merge solid. Take it off and then click OK. You will see two different objects have been created. If these objects were touching one another uh, and if you selected that merge option, it would have created one singular body while basically extending the whole object itself. Okay, straightforward enough. Now, um, let's look into the tool we have is called the shell, okay? While creating uh, objects, we could have used thin features to create uh, a hollow objects where in everything inside was hollow, right? If you remember, we have shown it. Now, we can do the same after creating a solid by using the shell object. Okay, If you click it on the left property manager, it will ask you, what is the thickness that you want? Let's say we want something around three millimeters. Okay, Now, it's going to ask which surface. So I'm just going to select this surface. Okay, uh, And if you select the show preview, it will show you how the thickness will be created. Okay. Now click OK. 
it will remove the surface you have selected and it will also create a shell object where the original object was a solid object body itself okay. if you want to check you can always um, use this because the other object is mirror to this see the original one was solid while here we have a shell object itself pretty straightforward okay next tool uh, that we're, we're going to use is the graft tool before doing that uh, solidworks gives us a feature where we can undo some uh, of the tools we have already used but again redo the whole thing uh, you can do it basically you can add a new feature in between this tree manager for that what you need to do is select this line here and pull it up up till the point you want things to be let's say if i pull up till this point the hole will be gone here if it, i pull it here you will see the whole thing here again um, the tool I've mentioned is creating draft. Of course, while creating the solid, we can always create the draft. But uh, if you say you came up with a design later on on the design phase and you need to create a draft, you can always use this. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is need to know which surface, with respect to which surface you want to create the draft. Let's say I'm going to create a draft with respect to this one. now i need to select which surface has to be drafted right so let's say i'm selecting this one here uh, this box on the left property manager and selecting all these fine faces now we want to create an outward draft itself let's say i want to make it uh, 10 degrees once done click apply as you can see it has created a draft uh, of 10 degrees on the outside with respect to the surface we have and once you're done just click ok and that's it you have your object so now as i was mentioning that you can apply any of the features in between and still have the all the same things you had from the previous steps is here you can just pull it again now as you see you've created the mirror again but now it has the draft features in it it's fun, right? You don't have to change a lot and don't have to delete a lot of the features, but you're already getting everything you were looking for. Now, you also created the shell feature when I put this um, line down, and now you have most of the things you need for this draft. Fun. Uh, next up, we have the wrap tool. Okay, so people use wrap tool to use um, or create scratches or logos or designs on the surface of the product okay so i'm what i'm gonna do before using this i'm gonna hide this this object here okay or let me hide this mirror object here so i'm gonna right click on it and select this eye here so it's gonna hide our object there okay looks cool looks good right um on this plane uh i'm gonna draw a sketch let's say I'm going to write something like SOLIDWORKS, right? So, S. Okay, I created this sketch and click OK. Let's say this is the logo we want to imprint on the surface of this object. We're going to select the wrap option here, select the surface where we want to have this etched and oops yes sir. select the wrap tool here select the sketch that you want to use and now it will do the projection for you automatically so the first thing you need to do is select on the left property manager this box where the surface or which surface you want to select so i'm selecting the surface here as you can see it is showing now you have a few different types that you can use one is you create an extruded version so it will have an extruded logo here uh, of certain thickness let's say two millimeters in this case or you can do an emboss where you will put an impression on the surface from this logo itself 
or you can just each each an outline okay so let's look at all at uh, one at a time so i'm selecting the each first and thinking okay and as you can see it has just created an outline there that's it so now it's just two different surfaces other than that it's pretty straightforward uh, going back there, it features, if you do on the debos here, click OK, let's I'm just making it two millimeters. You will see there is an impression there, right? It has created a cut away and created the logo there. And we have, if you go to the emboss here, uh, click OK, you will see it has come to uh, extra portion. Now, a question will be, hey, uh, say it. Uh, we can always do that by just drawing on the surface directly and just do an extrude boss or an extrude cut and get the same thing. Yes, of course, we can do that. There is no problem with doing that. We also have the option um, to use any other tool to create any of the features. One advantage the wrap tool gives you if you're working on a cylindrical object. Okay, so let me show you an example. So I'm creating a different plane here. And on this plane, I'm gonna draw, let's say a cylinder, a cylindrical object. So I'm just creating something, a rectangle here, right? And going to the features, being the resolve, uh, I mean, revolve bar, uh, boss and base. And I'm gonna use this surface as my Access, right now let's let's hide the other objects here we have okay that's good okay and i'm gonna make it perpendicular to this and on the first plane i'm gonna draw something okay let's let's draw something like this a little crazy this is going a little crazy and click exit okay so it falls on top of the cylinder okay? and this is how it is so now if you go into the wrap tool and select the sketch and for the surface you select this surface here you see it is wrapping around the object so if you have a curved surface it's easy to wrap around those objects here so uh, let's say i'm just going an emboss here clicking ok you will see it ha it has curved itself around the cylindrical object itself, right? Instead of just putting it on the same goal, um, on the plane surface. So if, if we do a uh, Devos, it's gonna be the same thing. Okay, it, 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 uh, if it was a uh, plane surface, it would have been easy using um, the extrude boss and base. But for cylindrical objects or spherical objects, uh, using the wrap tool is pretty straight. So the question is, can you create the same thing with other tools? Yes, you can. You need to be a little crafty in this. Why do so if you already have the tool given to you?